We use a chi-squared test for independence when we're trying to decide whether two categories or two qualitative variables are um, independent or dependent on one another. Okay, um, So the chi-squared test of independence just helps you provide evidence to see whether, you know, um, in this case, looks like the subject, you know, see whether the subject is dependent on whether a student is an athlete or not. Okay. So a survey asks a group of college students about their majors. And it also groups the students uh, by whether they are athletes or not. So if we're going to run a chi-square independence test, we're going to test to see whether a person's choice and major is dependent on a person's status as either an athlete or non-athlete. Okay. Or maybe they're independent. Maybe they don't affect one another. So for this, uh, for this problem, we don't actually have to do the null alternative hypothesis. So I've got another video for uh, calculating uh, test statistics too, but um, they want to know which one of these uh, tables are set up so that you have the expected values correct. Okay, that's just to help us in notation. We usually put the expected value right underneath each observe each observed value. So um, they expect like for this table, if we expect 11.5. Uh, athletes to be also humanities students. That's what we put here. So that might be wrong though. We need to calculate the expected values ourselves. So the way you do it is you find out the probability of uh, like assuming that they're independent of each other. Assuming we, we start off with this null hypothesis of independence and then we're going to calculate um, an ex uh, we're going to calculate a test statistic um, you know, we won't do it for this video, but later on we'll calculate a test statistic to decide whether they are dependent. So we're going to assume HO is true. We're going to assume that they're independent of one, one another. And we're going to find the probability that a randomly selected student would be an athlete and a humanities student, and then multiply that probability to the total amount of students. In other words, it's like the expected values that we did earlier on in the course. You take a probability and then multiply it to the actual value of x. So. Uh, the way we can do that kind of short description of how you calculate each expected value is you're going to take the row total for like let's start with athlete arts take the row total multiply it to the column total and then divide it by the grand total okay so the row total is 36 the column total is 35 and the grand total is 75 so if you multiply 36 times 35, then divide by 75, we expect 16.8 students to be athletes if they are in the arts in this sample. So <clears throat> assuming they're independent, if you have 75 students, we expect 16.8 of them to be arts and athlete students. Uh, and that might be enough to eliminate them. Look, this is 15.8, 17.8, 17.8, 16.8. That's the only one with 16.8. So you really just have to calculate probably one or two uh, expected values. Like if you got 17.8 for arts and athlete for an expected value, then you'd have to do another calculation. But you don't have to fill out the whole total. Okay. Newton knows you've got the idea if you can get one of the values. But uh, let me just double check that again. Row total times column total divided by the grand total. 16.8, yep, that's the only one that's got it, so that's got to be our correct answer.